Good evening, it's 8pm on Thursday the 7th of March and this is the 29th of 53 consecutive five mile walks from the Gresford Memorial to the Miners Rescue and back again. And so as I look into the Gresford Inquest report and its findings continues, it's becoming obvious that Gresford was a disaster waiting to happen. We'll never know for sure what caused the explosion, but as we've learned, a lack of basic supervision, temperamental electrics, the use of non-fireproof equipment and restricted airways could have all played a part in the loss of so many wrecks and men and boys. But appallingly, the list goes on. Gresford was always known as a gassy pit. And when the Coal Mines Act of 1911 introduced a legal requirement for air measurements to be made on a monthly basis and entered into the prescribed logbook, it should have served Gresford well to have ventilation levels monitored at regular intervals and acted upon should issues arise. However, during the inquiry, it was revealed that air measurements were neglected and shockingly, they were fabricated. In June 1936, Assistant Surveyor William Idris Cuffin admitted that on the instruction of William Bonzel, he'd not made any measurements post June 1934 and that the figures in the logbook for July and August had been concocted a day or two after the disaster. Henry Walker, Commissioner, was quick to deflect direct blame from Cuffin, stating that he was given more work than he could overtake and that in consequence, he scamped the work of air measurement. And beyond this, Walker also uncovered simple miscalculations in the recording of air measurements in general and concluded that they gave little or no guidance to the actual state of the ventilation in the mine. The evidence of miners pertaining to the presence of gas was contradictory. Some miners claimed they'd never witnessed gas, while others definitively stated that they had. Walker seemed confident that gas was present in the Dennis section, but did not go as far as to say the mine managers had broken the law with regard to ventilation, although expressing some frustration with the contradictory evidence provided, saying, where the truth lies amongst such diverse statements, is difficult to say. And then there was the issue of shot firing. Shot firing in mines was performed to loosen coal from the coal face as firing would create coal dust that was highly flammable. A process called stone dusting was practiced in the industry, which was designed to contain the dispersal of dust. And although it could not stop all explosions, the process was successful in preventing violent, more destructive ones. Having heard the evidence, Walker concluded that in the district where the explosion occurred, stone dusting was never done. Added to this, he asserted that shot firing was carried out with little regard for the safety requirements that had been laid down in the Explosives in Coal Mines order. His opinion, based on the fact that so many shots were being fired, was that it was nigh on impossible to give the due care and attention needed for each single shot. And so having weighed up the evidence and taken on board the theories of both councils, led by Cripps and Shawcross, the Commissioner summarised what he thought would have been the most likely explanations of the disaster. Number one, a shot had ignited the gas. Number two, gas had been ignited by some mishap to a safety lamp or a coal cutter or something else. Number three, ignition was caused by a defective telephone when it was about to be used to warn others of the presence of gas. And number four, a pillar of coal having reached a tremendously hot temperature, had spontaneously combusted. 
Maybe one of the poor souls somewhere below the fields that stretch from Gresford to Boris may know the cause. But for those lucky enough to have survived the disaster, and for the wives, sons, daughters, brothers, mothers and fathers who lost loved ones, they would never know the real cause of events that would abruptly throw their lives upside down. So having isolated the likely causes of the Gresford tragedy, tomorrow we turn our attention to accountability. Who was to blame for the deaths of so many? This walk was dedicated to Robert Jones of Gresford, Robert Jones of Penick High, Thomas Jones, Thomas E. Jones, and Thomas J. Jones.